Welcome. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. This is Alice Lee Hagen. Today, my guest is my um, is the dean of uh, the John A. Burns School of Medicine at the University of Hawaii, Jerris Hedges. Dean Hedges, welcome to our show. And before I start asking you a lot of different questions, um, just a short introduction to you, but I'm sure everybody knows about you. You've been with Jabsom for, uh, since 2008 as Correct. their dean, and you have a really interesting background. Well, not to mention that in 2013, you were recognized as the Physician of the Year by the Hawaii Medical Association. And I guess in researching this um, interview, I found out that you were actually initially trained as a chemical engineer so how that did that become um, uh, your how did that uh, come to your interest in uh, in emergency medicine then all right well well thank you Alice and mm -hmm. first of all thank you very much for allowing me to be here and share some of the things happening with the John A Burns School of Medicine mm -hmm. uh, I, I was um, you know, very blessed growing up, um, came from very humble beginnings on a, on a, on a farm in um, western Washington, went to public schools, including community college, uh, throughout my uh, education, undergraduate through medical school. But when I was uh, a student going to community college, the only strong science program was an engineering program. Okay. And so I took general engineering courses and transferred to the University of Washington the year after uh, the first American landed on the moon and I thought well aeronautics and astronautics would be fun so I became actually an aerospace engineer as an undergraduate oh and then God. in graduate school uh. I got a master's in chemical engineering uh. while I was preparing and completing all the prerequisites for medical school my interest was to combine the science that we learn and the problem-solving techniques mm -hmm. from engineering to the practice of medicine and oh. I've been able to do that reasonably well and have uh, found that the systems approach that's used was very helpful first in my uh, approach to treating patients and um, essentially putting systems of care for emergency uh, systems together but also subsequently in working here in Hawaii with the different hospital systems and our distributed uh, medical school. That's amazing. Um, I guess right now the focus is on interdisciplinary training and you are a prime example of what can be done from engineering to medicine to become an academic leader. Now I know that you um, were here sitting at the same seat about a year and a half ago with Senator Josh Green to talk about developing um, Hawaii's next generation of doctors. Now, today, uh, a year and a half later, um, I'd be interested in finding out what has been happening at the School of Medicine. So um, perhaps first off, I guess I should say congratulations to you. Um, I, I noticed that your uh, simulation center was nationally recognized just recently. And um, maybe you can comment on it while our producer plays that, vid uh, that video. I'd be very happy to do that. Thank you. Okay, so I guess that was, um, let's see, uh, producer, would you mind playing the simulation center uh, video, please? Cue that. Yeah. Well, one of the things while they're uh -huh. preparing that is mm -hmm. the uh, simulation center mm -hmm. was one of the key elements to the new campus mm -hmm. that was opened in 2005. Mm -hmm. And here we see uh, one of our instructors uh, demonstrating along with uh, Benjamin Berg, who's one of our faculty, an intensive care doctor who's doing the ventilation of this mannequin. Mm -hmm. um, this working with the mannequin mm -hmm. is an opportunity to uh, handle uh, a lifelike mm -hmm. uh, structure that mm -hmm. um, not only gives you the feel of working with the body mm -hmm. but also this is a mechanical robot that has simulated speech and can answer questions that you may wow. pose of it uh -huh. in terms of are you having any pain where is your pain are you having trouble breathing do you feel dizzy do you have um, you know lightheadedness it uh, is also uh, programmed so that you can hear the breathing mm -hmm. uh, from the lungs, mm -hmm. you can hear the heartbeat, you can feel the pulse, oh and gosh. it's uh, 
physiological status mm -hmm. will change as you administer medications, mm -hmm. administer oxygen. Mm -hmm. And so you're challenged uh, as you treat the patient's presentation to met not to give the wrong medicine or give it at the wrong time mm -hmm. and also challenged to do certain interventions. Mm -hmm. So if a lung is collapsed, for example, you have to decompress the thoracic cavity and ex re-expand the lung or your patient won't get better. And sometimes the patients don't recover. Oh and my God. So we challenge the students uh -huh. that way uh -huh. so they know how to deal with uh, you know, a resuscitation that does not uh -huh. succeed. And they have to then go through a simulated uh, experience talking to the family about mm -hmm. what was done. So it's a tremendous way to give students a very objective and sometimes very stressful situation in a, in a way that can be done reproducibly. And we can go back and, and repeat areas where there have been challenges in the actual performance. And they, they get to learn that without any patient being put at risk. That's what I was going to say. There's always a second chance, right, with the mannequin. Yes. So how many students actually have to go through that, um, that training? Is this a mandatory training? It's a them? mandatory re requirement for our students. Mm -hmm. And we are um, also in increasing the amount of time at different levels. Mm -hmm. So it's not only our first and second year students, mm -hmm. but we bring back students in their uh, third and fourth years and also during residency training. Mm -hmm. uh, the, one of the nice things about the simulation is that you can do a lot of interdisciplinary training at the same time so you can work with respiratory therapists you can work with nursing uh, you can work with social workers you can put all sorts of scenarios together that uh, really help people understand how to work with the team so mm -hmm. it's a tremendous educational tool and because some of the scenarios have been put together um, in, in ways that are fairly advanced as well as some of the evaluation techniques that uh, have been developed here and disseminated nationally mm -hmm. are getting recognition. Mm -hmm. uh, that really gave us this unique status of being one of only about a dozen centers across mm -hmm. the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, recognized for full accreditation as a simulation center. Wow, that's great. Really, congratulations. That's oh, great you. news. Now, so that's one of the many achievements uh, at your school. Um, something else that came to mind is the um, I guess this other program uh, called the Nanakuli Nana Pathway to Health. Uh, what, is, what is that one about, um, Dean Hedges? Well, um, we realize that our medical school is committed for uh, multiple purposes. It's mm -hmm. not just to train individuals to be doctors, mm -hmm. but to train our young students from our own state to be doctors mm -hmm. so that they will choose to practice here. So we have an obligation not just to train, but to make sure that the individuals we bring in to train are from our state and are committed to staying and practicing in our state so that those uh, who live in our state and make commitments to the school have both opportunities for their children to become doctors and those who are trained will stay and take care of those from Hawaii. Now, um, this is a, sort of a whole pathway mm -hmm. into the process because we need to be sure that we have as many talented, prepared, and trained individuals from all of our multi-ethnic, multicultural mm -hmm. uh, communities that are prepared and ready to come to our school. Now, some schools are just better prepared, mm -hmm. and uh, we continue to work with those in terms of advising and guidance. But there are other schools where at the middle school and high school level, mm -hmm. the uh, life sciences and health programs could be advanced. Mm -hmm. And so our medical students are trained to themselves be educators and work with the health and the biology teachers at those schools to bring information about the life sciences to the students and give them an idea of what they personally could do not that many years out. Mm -hmm. So you take someone gray-haired and <laughs> middle-aged like myself, mm -hmm. um, they don't relate as well to me. But you take someone who came from their neighborhood, who is there as a medical student now, and it excites them. It shows them that they, too, can become a health professional. And here's the individuals who've done that. But I think um, you're really kind of answering a question I have in mind of um, how the medical school is reaching out to 
um, the younger people to get them interested in healthcare. But before we continue, maybe I can ask the producer to show the second video um, to, uh, to show uh, this program, um, Pathway to Health in Nanakuli. And perhaps, Dean Hedges, you can um, tell us later on um, yeah, the genesis of this program. So, producer, okay. if you don't mind. Nanakuli Pathways to Health began with a collaboration between the Nanakuli High School and Intermediate School, along with um, Kamehameha Schools and our John A. Burns School of Medicine. Nanakuli Pathways to Health allows those middle school and high school students interested in health careers to pursue that and actually allow them to have the skills or help them build the skills and to pursue that career as well as graduating from high school. It's a big dream and hopefully our legacy to the community um, from NHC and Jabsum to be able to nurture our own healers with the Nanakuli students, the teachers and the faculty here at Jabsum. It's just this beautiful partnership. You know, um, building those dreams for them or helping them to achieve it. Also, the health of their bodies, their minds, and their community, too, and really helping the uh, children recognize their role in their own health and in the health of their families and the community at large. <laughs> It's not just for our middle school and high school children, it's also for our medical students in building their road and pathway to becoming a physician and raising that awareness for them of the um, needs of our Native Hawaiian people mm -hmm. and the community and how to improve those barriers or break those barriers that are um, causing such a disparity in health, disparity in education and socioeconomic um, status. So many elements are um, involved in this program that are women for both the students at Nanakuli as well as our medical students too. We may come from different places but we share the same values um, and the connection just begins and blossoms. Well before like I thought it was just oh go into the hospital they would just take care of you but I didn't think it would be like this in depth medical students come in the class and I just feel like now I can ask them questions, I can talk to them, they're like, oh, how is it at school? They come and teach us about like various amount of things, they teach us about germs, how to keep ourselves safe, how to help people, help our families. That is that. Dean Hedges, I think when I was reviewing this particular video, what I enjoyed most was um, the last part where the student was commenting how interesting it was. So how long has this program been around then? Yeah. Well, the uh, Nanakuli uh, program has been now for three, four years mm -hmm. uh, working with the Nanakuli School District, mm -hmm. but we've had some other programs. Uh, mm -hmm. That particular program is overseen by our Department of Native Hawaiian Health, mm -hmm. which has a strong commitment to working with the uh, students, uh, uh, Kanaka Mali students, our Native Hawaiians, and other Pacific Islanders. Uh, we also have summer programs where they will work with students who come in and work with uh, in labs, either in the cancer center or the medical school. So that uh, opportunity exists as well for more in-depth experience for a number of these students. Mm -hmm. We work with uh, the uh, student organizations across Hawaii that have a focus on the life science and bring them and their advisors uh, to spend a day with us at the medical school. Mm -hmm. They get to meet the uh, medical students. They get to see some demonstrations, including our simulation center. Mm -hmm. And we talk about career choices and, and where they are in making decisions about their career. And you said it's paying off, right? Oh, yeah. We're, we're, we're <laughs> Very much so. We're beginning to now see the students mm -hmm. who have been in high school, who've gone through college, and have applied for medical school and now uh, entering our medical school. And now they're looking forward to going back and working with the students uh, coming from their neighborhoods uh, and interested in this as a future career. That's such a good, um, that's so good to hear that sort of positive feedback, especially, I guess, um, based on, again, your previous interview with Senator Green, I guess this uh, topic of physician shortages, I mean, that's always in our minds. So let, we're coming on our first break, but I still want to stay on the topic of some of the updates uh, mm -hmm. of, of the uh, medical school, and then perhaps we can go on to talk about some of the other challenges then. 
All right. Great. Very good. My guest is Jaris Hedges, the Dean of the John A. Burns School of Medicine at the University of Hawaii. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. My name is Alice Lee Hagan. We'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Kili'i Akina, President of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right, what's good, and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week, we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. My name is Alice Lee Hagan. If you are just joining us, my guest is Jaris Hedges, the Dean of John A. Burns School of Medicine at the University of Hawaii. Before the break, we were, talk, we were having an update about some of the major accomplishments at the uh, School of Medicine. So Dean Hedges, we talked about the simulation center that was recently recognized as one of the 13 centers in the state um, for, uh, for research and teaching. And we talked about the Nanakuli Pathway to Health program. Um, something else about the school, and I know that you are uh, preparing for the, um, the 50th anniversary gala. Would you like to share that with us? Yeah, I'd like to share a little bit about the, uh, the gala, but mm -hmm. also about how we got to that point. Uh, this is the 50th year since the founding of the John A. Burns School of mm -hmm. Medicine, and we're, we're so excited that uh, we're reaching this uh, key milestone. The, um, the school had uh, quite humble beginnings and was controversial at the beginning because starting a medical school requires a lot of elements above and beyond what one would do with a, uh, a usual graduate uh, program because you have to have clinical training, you have to have clinical faculty, you have to have participating institutions, hospitals and clinics that mm -hmm. will work with the students. Mm -hmm. So to achieve that, um, there had to be a number of elements brought together. And even uh, you know, creating the niche for the medical school mm -hmm. on the Manoa campus was mm -hmm. challenging. Mm -hmm. So it began uh, as a conception mm -hmm. uh, in 63, uh -huh. but it, uh, and then in 65 was formally acknowledged and founded. And then for several years, it was functioning as a two-year program. Oh. So the medical students who were largely selected from Hawaii mm -hmm. would get their training in Hawaii in the preclinical basic sciences. Mm -hmm. And then they would leave Hawaii and complete their training spread across the continental US. Unfortunately, when you do that sort of a distributive model that involves the entire US, getting the students back to practice in Hawaii is challenging because they not only complete their medical school training, but they largely do their residency training elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a challenge in terms of fulfilling the goal of not only providing opportunity, mm -hmm. but providing future providers for our state. Right. And so uh, in the uh, early 70s, mm -hmm. there was sort of a critical decision point of how do we move forward mm -hmm. because we want to provide the full four years of training here in our state. Mm -hmm. So to do that, we needed a clinical site. And there was discussion around having a university hospital that was created. But that was unpopular both uh -huh. with the local hospitals and unpopular with the local doctors who uh, were concerned about mm -hmm. a town gown phenomenon where the uh, university, mm -hmm. the gown, mm -hmm. would somehow through its reputation absorb local providers and oh, take see. business away from local hospitals. Uh -huh. So uh, there's a longer story to this, but just to say very shortly, uh -huh. uh, cooler heads prevailed mm -hmm. and a community-based model was developed. Mm -hmm. So today, as it was in the early 70s mm -hmm. when it became a four-year school, 
we have our students trained in the local community hospitals. Mm -hmm. So we're distributed across uh, Hawaii and provide education with all of our hospital partners. It provides a wonderful experience for our students. They are very much aligned with and connected with the local providers and the local hospitals. And there's a natural flow from when they complete their training into practice into our state. So it's actually enhanced our ability to train doctors for Hawaii and has worked out well. Dean Hedges, that's a great summary of the history of the medical school, but um, I'm just curious, how many doctors have been trained by JAPSOM since its um, uh, inception? Since its inception, mm -hmm. roughly 2,200 have been trained, mm -hmm. and uh, we have um, about 55% uh, of those doctors are still practicing here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it, it's a good landmark when mm -hmm. you look at the um, success in retention mm -hmm. uh, most public schools uh, are able to claim that somewhere between 30 to 40 percent of their graduates practice in their state after training oh, okay. um, in our case it's it's much higher than that okay if they and we also do what's called a graduate medical education or residency training mm -hmm. so after medical school you need to do three to five years additionally mm -hmm to prepare yourself to be licensed and as a, a specialist in a particular discipline. Mm -hmm. So uh, if they do medical school and they do the residency program here, we have close to an 85% retention rate. That's Just amazing. the best in the nation in terms of keeping students in state after their training. So what are you doing differently? I mean, you were just telling us the statistics that for a public school, the retention is really good, 55% compared to the national average of, say, 35 to 40. So what are you doing differently, and why are, um, why are graduates staying here? Well, the graduates um, generally stay because, one, they're from Hawaii, mm -hmm. and so 90% of our class is chosen from the state. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other is that we immerse them in uh, the practice setting and they become part of the community and so there's a lot of bonding with that. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> when I was here speaking with Senator Green, one of the areas we spoke about is our increasing effort to provide additional training on the neighbor islands. And that's where our greatest health need is and we've been making extra effort for that. Mm -hmm. But that has to continue to grow um, mm -hmm. and only by having our students in their formative years see mm -hmm. the opportunities mm -hmm. will they be excited by and understand how their future career will fit nicely with that setting. Mm -hmm. So we pro select them from Hawaii, we give them opportunities to train in Hawaii, and we connect them with the community throughout their training. And we provide the residency training opportunities in Hawaii for the most part, mm -hmm. all of which lead to interest and high retention rates for us. And I know that, again, um, re in reviewing your interview, um, previous interview with Senator Green, and um, that I think uh, you talked about reaching out to the community. Healthcare is not just treating a disease, um, um, and it it's important to connect with the community. Um, but having said that, and I know that um, your school is doing a lot in training physicians, I, I guess I looked at the website and in 2014 to 2015, probably you'll be graduating another 500, is that correct, the statistics that I looked at? Well, our, our, uh, no, our, I wish we could graduate that many. We're, we're, we're going to be, um, there's a shortage mm -hmm. of physicians mm -hmm. that's somewhere in the area of um, 500 uh, to 600 oh, okay. uh, uh, physicians at this time. Mm -hmm. And that's expected to increase a bit because our physician population is actually on, on the older side and many are considering uh, retirement or at least cutting back on their practices. So our need is greater than ever. And interestingly, across the nation, there's a physician shortage. So we can't count on California to train the doctors that Hawaii needs. We have to train them locally. But our class size, mm -hmm. we have an entering class size of, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be 68 students. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that's a small class size, but <clears throat> we have a very unique educational program that, uh, like I said, connects them with the community very mm -hmm. quickly. And um, 
I think that we'd like to incrementally grow our class size, mm -hmm. but also grow the residency training opportunities. So after our students finish medical school, mm -hmm. instead of uh, a little over half having to leave the state to complete training, mm -hmm. we would like a, a little more than half be able to stay to complete training here. Mm -hmm. And that'll be, mean working with the hospitals, working with the states to grow opportunities for residents um, you know, residency training to increase here in Hawaii. Can you tell us a little bit about your collaboration with the other healthcare facilities here? Because I guess part of the history was when the medical school was being developed, there were some concerns that businesses would be taken away. And I presume that's not a thought that's in, uh, not among physicians right now, right? It, it hasn't been a major factor, mm -hmm. uh, but we're always cautious and aware that there's mm -hmm. uh, concerns that people may have mm -hmm. if the medical school uh, looks like it's growing too large. But mm -hmm. we depend on our practitioners in the community. We have 1,200 physicians who donate their time and effort to help train our students oh, and okay. residents. Mm -hmm. So we're very collaborative with mm -hmm. the local practitioners. The, um, each of the teaching hospitals um, has, and the main teaching hospitals, has a connection with the medical school. Mm -hmm. So. Much of our uh, teaching is taking place at, for example, Queens Medical Center, mm -hmm. where we have psychiatry, pathology, mm -hmm. surgery, um, internal medicine, orthopedics training. Uh, in the Kapiolani mm -hmm. uh, Women's and Children's Medical Center, we have obstetrics, gynecology, mm -hmm. and we also have pediatrics. Mm -hmm. At Kuakini, we have geriatric oh, medicine. Okay. At Waiwa General Hospital, we have our family medicine program. And then we rotate um, students in some of the other uh, hospitals to give them an exposure to mm -hmm. different practice settings as well. Mm. Um, you talked about rotation, and I remember that uh, when you talk about some of the innovation, innovative uh, teaching pedagogy, um, that was part of it, and problem-based learning. Would you care to revisit that topic with us? Well, I'll, I'll mention it uh, quickly for uh, those who are just, uh, problem-based learning uh, was uh, developed at McGill in Canada about a little over 20 years ago. Uh, but Harvard and uh, our medical school were two of the first institutions to embrace this. And we've probably taken it to the most uh, well-developed uh, level. And we have a model program that has ha given demonstrations throughout Asia where there's growing interest in this model and a, and a number of sites within the continental U.S. What the program does is it brings students together with mentors to study uh, standard cases that allow the mentor instructor to work with the students to develop an approach that uses all of the basic science and the clinical science that a practicing physician would use. And we work cases through different body systems, organ systems, so that at the end of two years, they've studied the complete basic science and clinical science approach to patients um, with common presentations that would come to see them. And the skill set that they have from this is that they can integrate this information mm -hmm. in a manner that uh, it's unlikely that most third-year medical students would even have that. By the end of their second year, they are thinking like doctors, and we force them to begin that process actually within their first week of medical school. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of a, of a shock for those who like to I'm sit sure. in a classroom and memorize facts, mm -hmm. because in the classroom with us, they're actually solving problems and trying to learn from each other in terms of how you actually put the basic science of biochemistry, uh, physiology, anatomy together with the social and behavioral aspects you would evaluate clinically. Ah, so I guess if I can relate this from the business school perspective, so it's almost like a case study where you have to bring in different aspects of business, whether it be finance, accounting, human resources, and try to look at uh, a situation or a challenge. I think there's a lot of similarities to that. Sure. Great. Dean Hedges, we are coming on a second break, but afterwards I'd like to continue our conversation about technology and innovation um, and how ha that have been continuing to transform the, um, the medical school. Great. 
My guest is Jerris Hedges, Dean of the John A. Burns School of Medicine here at the University of Hawaii. You've been watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education uh, Spotlight. We'll be right back. Aloha, Yappers. This is your host, Kingsley, for the Yap Show. Every Friday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time, you can catch us here live, Think Tech Hawaii. And then later on, we upload to our YouTube channel. We talk about youth issues, policies, uh, youth programs, and how to transition yourself into adulthood. Right. But this was like a sign, I guess. Hey, life's <laughs> like, hey, right. now's your chance to go back to school. What are uh, you doing? Catch us here again live, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Aloha. Hi, my name is Andrew Howard. I'm an astronomer at the Institute for Astronomy at the University of Hawaii up in Manoa. I'd like to tell you about the annual open house that we're having. This year it is on April 6th, 11 to uh, 4 p.m. It's an all-ages event, kids, grown-ups, even uh, people in between, everyone is welcome. We have a lot of uh, really fun activities. You get to meet astronomers, look at yourself in an infrared camera, play with Legos, make robots, look at videos. Um, you can even make it, some of the kids like to make comets out of uh, gravel and, and, uh, and snow. Even adults like to do that too. You'll be able to look at the sun with a solar camera uh, safely. It's really a great activity. We do this every year um, in April, and I hope uh, to see you this year. Thanks. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. If you're just joining us, my name is Alice Lee Hagen. My guest is Jerris Hedges, Dean of the John A. Burns School of, uh, School of Medicine at the University of Hawaii. We've been talking about the, um, uh, we had a quick overview of the history of the medical school and the upcoming 50th uh, anniversary gala. So Dean Hedges, you've been talking about the problem-based learning and that it's an innovative way of teaching gradu uh, um, medical students. Now, um, tell us more about how technology and in innovation have um, continued to transform your, your medical school. Thank you, Alice. Um, we're blessed with wonderful faculty and some very inquisitive students, mm -hmm. both in the medical student area, but also in several other areas. We have uh, students who get masters in communication science and disorders mm -hmm. that looks at the whole concept of speech and hearing mm -hmm. and um, helping educators as well as those in rehab programs, whether it's been a neurologic uh, challenge with the, with the ability to speak. We've um, introduced a lot, and we have graduate students who work in basic sciences. Mm -hmm. We've introduced some of the other technology techniques into uh, our uh, medical education, for example, in students who are doing um, dissection mm -hmm. of uh, willed uh, bodies. Uh, we have a willed body program where those uh, who are anticipating that uh, they rather than having their body simply cremated or burned, uh, mm -hmm. uh, buried, they, they would like to uh, donate the body mm -hmm. for students to use for instructional educational mm -hmm. purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the unique things we do with that program is that we uh, put the uh, body through a CAT scanner and recreate all of the images so that a student can um, imagine that the person they have in front of them was someone who had recently uh, presented with a complaint, had a CAT scan, and they were now charged with uh, surgically operating and examining different parts of the body. So it gives them uh, an ability to see beneath the skin before they even begin the dissection process. So it's a phenomenal uh, learning opportunity. That's amazing. Mm. Um, let me just say a little mm -hmm. bit about some exciting things mm -hmm. uh, dealing with uh, her, our whole understanding of uh, how genes interact and create uh, disease. Uh, one of the exciting things that we've been doing for the last several years was related to a recruitment to our uh, campus of Alika Mauna Kea, a, uh, a local uh, a graduate student mm -hmm. who actually had come from the Big Island uh, completed his uh, graduate studies elsewhere and did a fellowship at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda and has come back and worked with us mm -hmm. to study a field called epigenetics. What, what yeah, does so that mean? Epigenetics mm -hmm. means it's a study of how certain genes are mm -hmm. turned on and off because mm -hmm. we've learned that a lot of us carry around genes that could create illness or, or harm mm -hmm. but they're not active. 
Right. And they're uh, kept inactive by the body, but under certain conditions, sometimes stress, sometimes chronic inflammation, mm -hmm. sometimes related to con other conditions like diabetes, they will be triggered and illness will begin to progress in a more rapid manner. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at what signals these uh, genes to be turned on and off mm -hmm. and what we can do to maintain the bad ones in the off condition mm -hmm. and the beneficial ones in the on condition. So is this part of research with the cancer center? Is it part of the cancer center? We are doing collaborative work mm -hmm. with the cancer center on that, but we're also looking at the impact on cardiovascular disease and metabolic disease like diabetes as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we're looking across uh, different illness spectrums. Mm -hmm. uh, a very exciting uh, piece since you mentioned the cancer mm -hmm. center is uh, out of the uh, mesothelioma lab, there has been some very exciting work that's looked at a protein that binds with the gene and keeps the DNA tightly wound and protected from toxins in the environment and radiation exposure. And when there are insufficient amounts of this protein or the protein leaks out of the cell, the DNA unravels and becomes exposed and mutations can occur from uh, fr very active uh, uh, chemicals in the, in the cells we call free oxygen radicals and radiation uh, exposure. So um, part of the understanding of cancer is how do you protect the cells more, mm -hmm. keep the proteins that keep them tightly uh, uh, the chromosomes tightly wound, uh, they're in place and protect them from exposure to environmental toxins. So it's, it's, it's a great uh, new discovery that's going to have uh, relevance to multiple types of cancer in their, their introduction and may lead to new products mm -hmm. that will actually um, be helpful in protecting our, our genes from uh, disease in the future. So is this a, a proprietary research that's being done here at the Cancer Center then? Absolutely. Wow. Uh, this, this is uh, basic research supported mm -hmm. by uh, National Institutes of Health mm -hmm. and, and uh, other donors to the Cancer Center. Mm -hmm. But it is also work that once n these new discoveries have been found mm -hmm. that could be commercialized, that the University of Hawaii works with the Cancer Center mm -hmm. investigators and uh, protects those with uh, the intellectual property protected by patents. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm wondering if you can share your perspective on commercialization of all these research, because uh, I know we were talking about the patents and you're talking about intellectual property. Um, care to share some insight on that? Well, this is one of the great potentials mm -hmm. that exists today for um, our uh, university and for the state mm -hmm. because uh, as we have these major breakthroughs take place and a major understanding of how diseases occur, we can then uh, develop products that help the patient either by preventing the condition, helping us recognize it more quickly, or providing very targeted therapy that has minimal side effects because it's a targeted therapy. So. Um, the fact that we are now having this accelerated acquisition of new breakthroughs mm -hmm. and items that can be um, capitalized through the intellectual property, mm -hmm. uh, there's great potential for biotech to develop. Mm -hmm. uh, as we talked about the evolution of the medical school and there's been an evolution of the cancer center, the co-location mm -hmm. of both entities in the Kakoaku area was envisioned by former Governor Ben Cayetano and the legislature at that time as being the nidus for a future biotech industry. One of the <clears throat> realities is it's taken longer than we'd hoped mm -hmm. to get both of the entities there mm -hmm. and get the uh, collaboration going, but now it's booming. And the payoff is not tomorrow, but right. it may be five to ten years down the road with major new drugs being discovered and implemented and commercialized and that revenue stream will help the state, it'll help the university, it'll help both the medical school and cancer center. So we've only just begun to do some of the great things that were envisioned mm -hmm. a good 10 years ago when this was all put in motion. And I, I'm really hopeful that the state and all that have uh, seen this developed and invested in this will stick with 
uh, these programs and, and really see them to their full potential. It's a long-term investment. And again, I was looking at your website, even just the um, medical it's, uh, school itself. You, how much revenue do you bring in in terms of grant and um, all, all, all the other, uh, I guess, uh, grant money is affiliated with that? Do, do you have Yeah. Idea? Well, in, ter in terms of the direct mm -hmm. and indirect grant dollars, mm -hmm. uh, the Cancer Center brings in approximately $20 million a mm -hmm. year. And the medical school brings in approximately 40 to 42 million each year mm -hmm. uh, in grants and contracts. So, uh, the, next to the uh, School of Ocean and Earth uh, Science and Technology, SOAS, uh, this is the entity, this combined unit that uh, brings in more federal research dollars and, and is really the top um, for statewide. Uh, means of bringing in uh, National Institute of Health and other life science federal dollars to the state. And <clears throat> I have to keep reminding people that these are dollars that don't stay in the university, but they flow into mm -hmm. the community. They create jobs, mm -hmm. uh, and those jobs uh, create additional commerce that leads to construction and retail mm -hmm. work. So it's, it's a very important part of the state's economy. and one that promises to grow significantly. Having this combined uh, bioscience uh, and uh, health science entity at Kaka'ako is very important for anchoring the future growth and development of that area in terms of uh, both its growth as a cultural center as well as its growth as a new site of, um, of, of, of real estate because many condos are going up there and there will be associated uh, retail business with that. And I'm sure especially the state is always looking at ways to diversify our economy. This is one great way to doing that. Now, um, you mentioned that this year is, uh, I guess, um, a milestone for the, bit, uh, for the medical school. Um, you've talked a, a lot about the different projects, the innovation that's going on. So, and you've been um, the dean since 2008. So moving forward, what are some of your goals and plans for the medical school? I'm glad you asked that, Alice. Um, we, we have a lot of enthusiasm around um, some of our uh, core mission elements, which mm -hmm. is really uh, to help attain optimal health for all of Hawaii. And we're, we're doing that through a variety of ways. One, we have a scientific focus on health disparities. Mm -hmm. And this scientific focus is not just the hard science that we do in a laboratory, but the social sciences and networking with um, those in the community. And so part of what the School of Medicine and now the Cancer Center have been doing is building interprofessional uh, relationships with the School of Nursing, mm -hmm. uh, the public health program, mm -hmm. and with the School of Social Work. Uh, we also have ties with the engineering and the business school, as you know, mm -hmm. but in the health sciences area, there's more collaborative interdisciplinary training that's taking place for our trainees, and we're trying to develop uh, teaching sites that will be stressing and supporting this interdisciplinary approach. Uh, we think that the healthcare of the future is not just going to be a doctor talking to the patient, but it's a team of providers mm -hmm. that not only wait for the patient to come to them, but they're reaching out through multiple mechanisms to the patient's home, to school, and to the workplace to mm -hmm. keep them healthy, mm -hmm. keep them from having to require um, you know, care in the hospital or a surgical procedure, if at all possible. Well, as you said, it's, uh, it's the community health. And I think uh, all the programs that you've just mentioned, whether it be reaching out to young people or working with the older population, um, it's so community focused. And it's great to hear all the wonderful things that the School of Medicine is doing. And um, Dean Hedges, I have to thank you for being they are visionary leader, and it's great to have you at this program. I wish you all the best, and um, have a great celebration in July. Thank you, Alice. Appreciate that. Thank you, Dean Hedges. My guest is Jairus Hedges, Dean of John A. Byrne School of Medicine at the University of Hawaii. You've been watching Think Tech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. Please do join us next week for another program. Aloha.